Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. We're kicking things off with a bunch of news items, local events, and also uh, my city council report, talking a little bit about gr the growing Missoula, uh, the budget for the uh, police department, and also a little bit of some fun videos for you guys, uh, courtesy of the Zootown Arts Community Center and also myself, where I take an old movie and I redub it for your pleasure. All right, let's kick things off with some news. Former Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos went to space. Moving on, the Olympics started today and so far the stories have been surrounding just the controversy leading up to the Olympics, starting with Sha Shakari Richardson, who tested positive for THC, the component found in marijuana. Um, and much like you know, the United States is slowly going towards legalization of marijuana, the international community still does not recognize that as a, uh, a viable law. So therefore they banned her and she was one of the top contenders the Olympics. In, uh, in terms of other top tier contenders, Paralympian Becca Myers was refused to uh, allow her mother slash personal care assistant to join her in Olympic Village and she ended up dropping out as a result. Both were favorite gold medalists. Um, the Paralympian Becca Myers is both uh, blind and deaf. Another big issue that was brought up was the bikini bottoms forced uh, uh, upon the handball beach volleyball, uh, uh, the beach handball team and during uh while uh and of course uh d the norwegian's women's beach handball te hand handball team were fined for going against these standards w while wearing uh those thigh long shorts as opposed to the skimpy bikinis and they said that it was unnecessarily sexualized and uncomfortable in competition according to newsweek it seems this complaint had approximately zero impact on officials and they the team was fined a total of 1500 euros men have a little more leeway no surprise there they can wear shorts basketball even and a basic muscle tank top shirt this has been a major issue for a while now and if they want to wear less they should be able to just as much as they should be able to wear more clothes. Uh, Drogo Rogan actually had a really good rant on the difference between how the Olympics are run versus the UFC. Uh, in terms of viewership, NBC uh, will be the platform hosting the Olympics as they have always been doing for a while now and you can watch them anytime because you'll most likely be bombarded with ads. They also reported the opening ceremonies kicked off because uh, uh, in Japan it's about 17 or uh, about 13 hours ahead of us and so you guys can uh, do that as uh, you can look that ahead of that as well but it seems like most of your uh, competitions you'd have to be able to watch at 6, 7, 8 in the morning just so you can see some of those evening uh, sports. Uh, so that's what's happening in the, in, in the international market in terms of sports. But in Saturday news earlier last week, Germany lost over 180 people because of flooding, a disaster 60 years in the making. And a town hit worse by the disaster received two months of rain in only two days. This also followed one of the driest seasons on record. So a lot of the soil was extremely dry. So it was so the water didn't have anywhere to go, so it really just kind of stayed. So waterlogged and muddy, the town still have bones of their town poking out of the disaster, which saw inches turn into feet as Wednesday night had heavier rains come. And so far, Germany says this will take months to recover, and they look in words of spending $354 million to restore these towns affected by flooding. And uh, uh, Prime Minister of Germany... <coughs> Angela Merkel is very confident that Germany's economy will not suffer. And speaking of economy, the child tax credit kicked in this month. Um, so every uh, every 15th of the month uh, for the next year, people who have kids uh, and they don't uh, make more than $150,000 a year for uh, combined partner income or 75000 for single family incomes. And that is, uh, and how it works is that each kid six and under are worth $300 per month and kids older than that up to 17 is about $250 a month per kid per month and this is will be going on for the the year and this was part of the Man American Rescue Plan this kind of money is good for single mothers to get daycare so they can work to gain in income rather than paying for the increasing child care costs this is a pilot program and that will last a year and was part of the American Rescue Plan like I said this isn't just for low income but for a middle class making less than 150 annually for couples 75,000 for single housing <coughs> oh geez now I'm having a coughing fit Jesus <coughs> Ah, sorry about that. Mm. So, um, and also the IRS came out with a statement saying that if you get a call claiming to be the IRS, ignore it because they would not be actively searching for you to give you money. Just think about it like that. 
And so if you get a call, email, or anything, anything, even reaching out on social media in some cases, do not trust them. And if you do not get your money on the 15th, you contact the IRS and you go online to the IRS.gov for more information and how you can qualify for this child tax credit. Up next, we talk a little bit more about the fire season. Yes, just think about that. Um, we are so, uh, just the statement itself is that the fires at this point are just inevitable. Hence why a lot of people are just calling it fire season. And so far, we're going to be covering a couple of the fires that are closest to uh, the Missoula area. And we're kicking things off with uh, my notes. So we got the West Lolo Creek Fire. A uh, fire complex, one of the closer fires towards us as well, and uh, this one was sparked, I believe, by lightning. Uh, thunderstorms on July 7th uh, started multiple wildfire, w multiple wildfires, and so this one is. Let's see here. This one is about 2,500 acres, 21% contained. There are a lot of little fires around here in town, but we got also the Granite Pass uh, complex fire as well. If we take a look at this map, you kind of get a uh, the gist of it. You can see some of these fires just kind of pop up. This is the Granite Pass Complex, 2,300 acres, about 1% contained. Uh, West Lolo looks like it's 21% contained up here. Then you have the Anderson Hill Fire, which is about e uh, east of Missoula, 750 acres. Just a lot of little fires, nothing too big, but you know, there's always we always got to treat every fire like it has the potential of growing exponentially. So. That's kind of what's happening in th this side of Montana, in our part of Missoula. Lewiston, Washington fires are around 70 to 100,000 acres in fire. Uh, but also the bowl, uh, bootleg fire, which is like the big fire that's happening in Oregon, is nearly 400,000 acres, making it one of the biggest in 100 years. News says that it's as big as the LA area, also ge generating its own weather. All sorts of buzzwords to keep you watching. But just to know the latest, go to incineweb.nwcg.gov. Again, that's INSAweb, like incident, but incineweb.nwcg.gov. You can always just Google the fires of Missoula, or I mean the f you know fire, uh, fire incidents in the United States, and you can kind of get a map, and you get a scope. I there's a lot of fires happening. There's some that are small, some that are big. This one's a big one happening in the American Folk Fire just uh, basically central Montana, south central Montana. Just, yeah, I mean, it's a, it is a great resource, and there's just so much going on, and I definitely got to give some props for a lot of the fire shot of the hot shots and fire crews out there working uh, on these systems. All right, so that about does it for your news. Uh, so what's happening next is that we have a new school that's going to be opening here in Missoula, and it is a, a it kind of feels like it's a, uh, a Actually, I won't talk a little bit. I'll talk a little bit more about it, but with our guests, Gail and Shane, as they explain a little bit more about Walnut Academy. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is Gail and Shane. They're here to talk about Walnut Academy, which I've kind of uh, had a interest in because I've noticed that Missoula has looked into a lot of alternative learning programs, um, you know, Learn Inc., uh, Missoula International School. It kind of feels like it's like a parental education co-op. Mm -hmm. Could you guys explain a little bit more about like how you came up with this uh, concept for school? Yeah, sure. So we see it as a parent cooperative, but it's also a community that we have been building over the last nine months or so of families who recognize that there is a need for middle school and high schoolers to have a different option and an option that doesn't look like any of the current educational options. So we're getting a lot of positive feedback from um, other schools and from other families that this is an area where teenagers who really want something that is student-led and is not a traditional model can come and find a safe place to grow in whatever way they need to be growing. And I've seen some success with uh, uh, Willard High School as well because a lot of times uh, they are trying to figure out ways to keep kids in school and make sure that they graduate. Um, and so part of that was just like, what do you want to learn? And then they really start uh, like centralizing on the specific field as well. It's very much like a vocational kind of school, if you really think about it. Right. The, of the vocation of, of life, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, yeah, it is a beautiful thing to, to genuinely mean it when we ask, what do you want to learn? And a lot of the, the work is allowing for that, that trust mm -hmm. to be there of the student, to know that the, the staff truly is there to just below the sales of their intrinsic desire to give themselves what they want and to know what they want 
it is mostly good for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and just you know, uh, just having a, a, a grown up around to help them guide where uh, they can see what may also not be good for them, but that may even come through exploring and finding out for themselves mm-hmm. what they do want, what they do not want, mm-hmm. and that can that's beautiful and it can be frightening at times as well. To be honest. And so. For parents who are interested in this, uh, where can they learn more information? Sure. Yeah, you can check us out at walnutacademy.org or on Facebook. Um, You can call us at 406-493-1813. We also are hosting community nights every single Wednesday at 6 p.m. at the school. And people can just drop in. We have some food. We play games. We hang out. We're just building that community. So it's at 701 Walnut at the corner of 5th and Walnut. And we're very friendly, welcoming group. and, And people are welcome, the neighbors in that neighborhood or interested families, anyone really is welcome to stop by and, and we will happily share what we're doing and we're, you know, we're trying to save enough space and hold enough space in our program development for the families that haven't even joined us yet so that when they join us, they can be part of that building process too. Cool. cool. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about the naming uh, process. How did you guys come up with uh, Walnut Academy? <laughs> Well, it's on walnut, right? Yeah. <laughs> and the walnut is sort of the brain nut, right. and, uh, and so our logo even is, you know, the drawing of a walnut. So it just felt like a stable name to me. And in the process, the process of naming the school was our first really foray in how we will uh, operate as as a school. We allowed ourselves the ability to name our our school whatever we wanted, everything from uh, old school academy. <laughs> to some, uh, some really rad and out there names. And, and we settled on uh, probably one of the most traditional names we could, but it felt right. It did feel right. Nice. And it's on Walnut Street. So yeah, the Walnut Academy worked. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, of course, I, I do hate to say this, but I noticed that, like, like you were saying, that you want to do you know, junior high, high school. I mean, I have noticed that there are certain limitations to alternative high school programs here in town as well. So I think it's great that you guys are kind of expanding upon that because even like other like Missoula National School or even um, Sussex School, they go until like eighth grade, junior right. high, and then they mm-hmm. usually would yeah. feed into the local MCPS uh, school system. Right. And so like I understand that a lot of people are struggling just because, you know, when you have these kind of classroom settings, you have 25 to 30 kids mm-hmm. per teacher. So I can really respect the fact that you guys are looking to kind of like really focus and centralize and have a smaller, more hands-on experience for these kids. Yeah, and we really want to be holistic. And so our focus is meeting the children when they walk in, the, or the teenagers rather, when they walk in in the morning. And, and some days that growth is going to be social and they're going to need communication with each other and they're building a community. And some days they're coming in maybe needing some emotion support, emotional support and identifying how they're feeling that day. And some days they may be ready to learn some, some geography or some math or whatever they're ready for, but really accepting them as they walk in every day and, and, and helping them build community. So we're gonna have you know, lunches that they prepare themselves together. We're gonna have a monthly family me- uh, meal where the family take turns cooking and sharing together. Um, there's an apprenticeship program to help the kids be connected in the community with whatever they're interested in. And we're also offering our, our students the chance to host students from other schools for an after school program every day from three to five, where if they're interested in chess, for example, they could run a chess club and connect with some friends at other schools so that we're really trying to model this is how to have a healthy, balanced life in a community. Nice. So you take care of yourself as an individual and then you build connection. And this really helps the kids basically be the leaders in their own education. Absolutely. That's great. So for more information, uh, once again, where can people find it? Walnutacademy.org on Facebook or 406-493-1813 or Wednesday nights at 701 Walnut. Come down and join us. 6 p.m. And it truly, to see you. it takes a village and you are the village. And we really, we're just part of the process where really all of us in this great community have birthed this, this experience. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Scott. Hey, guys. We are back once again. We're here to talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. We're kicking things off with 
We have a lot of movies. Just seriously, we got a lot of movies. Let's kick things off with this movie. Uh, we got <laughs> we got from G.I. Joe comes a spinoff movie without The Rock. So pff, you can just pass on this one, like hard pass. But if you must waste your time to learn about the origins of Snake Eyes, one of the more popular G.I. Joes, the movie star shares the title follows the voiceless protagonist in gives him a voice and a family and people to lose because the tortured hero you sickos want is here. Sorry, I didn't mean to be mean to a franchise about a colorful military as they fight terrorism on a global scale as in American Psychos, World Police. Anyways, if we don't get a knowing this half the battle in this movie, then what are we doing? What are we doing here? What, what, what's the point? Up next, we got... Old, or as some people call it, Young Challenged, comes a movie that follows a family to a beach that looks the locals warn them about, and obviously they're going to go to, because they're tourists. They always deserve what's coming to this movie, kind of follows those lines as a family grows up too fast, like supernaturally fast. And they got to get out of the beach before the sands of time literally kill these people uh, who are not related to this family as well. You know, most people will die because, they, you know, they got to show the stakes, you know. And a uh, real bad situation. All in all, this will be uh, an old man who leaves the beach to tell the tale to an M. Night Shyamalan type who will not believe them. But a lone survivor will live out the rest of their days in a retirement home. Just guessing. Up next, we also... Oh, no, this... Uh, we don't have any other... We have a bunch of movies coming out as well this weekend. So we're going to have... It's called a speed round. Okay. Midnight in to the switchgrass. Bruce Willis does the thing. Uh, he gets pulled out of retirement and must fight a new uh, fight a new age way of crime, only to use his knowledge to solve the case for a rookie who spends much of her time on makeup and skincare line than her acting. She is a delight, regardless of her dumpster fire. Jennifer, Jennifer's body to anybody. Then we got another ghost love movie about a person who's ready to live hereafter, only to die in some. Dumb way, kind of like the Elper Brooks and Meryl Streep movie about finding love after death. Anyways, this movie is about a, a new young couple hooking up, uh, fight for love, and most unlikely places, the life after. Barf, but date movie idea. <coughs> up next, we got Mark Wobler hangs with a child as a transit finding their way through the backcountry. But this movie is about a father going through on a journey for his gay son who's being bullied so Mark can get some street cred for the LGBT plus Q community. Uh, then we got, uh, so Settlers. So you finally decided to settle. This movie has to do with space and basically homesteading on another planet, which seems realistic, but not too long for some. Survive, fight, and basically steal land from local Martians. Have you ever seen Ghosts of Mars? Hence, that ends my segment for pre-critic. Up next, we got Dubbin' Stuff. So this movie is called I Bury the Living. Sounds pretty creepy, but it's a fun movie. Check it out. <laughs> Let me see here. I gotta say, you really are buried in paperwork. If you would permit me, I would... Uh, no, I'm fine. Gladly help you organize. What a mess. Hmm, it seems like other people organize other people's stuff a lot better than their own stuff. Yes, I'm talking about you. <sighs> Where do you get off talking to me like that? Hmm. I've seen your office. Why are you gonna keep on talking to me like that? Ugh. You're making me wait this long just for you to get ready to go. Are we gonna go? Are we gonna stick around and watch you smoke all day? Don't you know there might be a kid watching this and wanting to be 1958 cool? Hmm. Come on, we're here to see the Rockettes. I'm not interested in watching you smoke all day while I'm waiting for you. <laughs> you know what really confuses me? Is that people who watch television at home come to the town where they film it and then have to watch it here? <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. You already watch it anyways. Why do you need to be in the audience to watch the same thing you'd be watching at home? The Rockets perform every single week. It seems like they perform every single day. And you want to waste your time, your trip here, on watching them? <laughs> uh, come on, it's not that funny. <laughs> you know what's really sad about you? Please Is that you me. live in this town, and yet you don't experience what's happening in this town. I am visiting, and all I want to see is the Rockets. But you don't. Have you even seen the Rockets? Of course I've seen the Rockets. Well then, what happens? They play some music and they do the can-can. Who cares? It's the same thing. Hmm. Well, I'll just make my way back home, I guess. <laughs> Don't tell me you're going to go to the Rockets without oh, me. You know, you weren't my first choice. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Heck, There's you weren't even my second choice. <laughs> you... I'm going to walk off that door and I'm going to go see the Rockets with or without you. You do you, okay? Oh yeah, another thing. Hmm. 
I don't think you're going to live long enough to witness Hoopastank, so you might as well live a little and enjoy the Rockettes. All right, all right, I'm coming. Jeez, God. No, hold on, wait up. Ugh, really? You know, you know what's sweeter than water? Irony. All right, come on. Let's go to the Rockettes. <laughs> yes, I'm serious. <laughs> now get the lights. Let's get out of here. Hmm. All right, then. Oh, do you think we can get popcorn? No. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's kick things off with a little bit of city council. Kick. Um, so for the first thing that they're talking about is it was a thick consent agenda, which covers bills that the city plays, that the city pays, um, contracts, appointments to committees, contracts with developers, and uh, occasional public hearings that this week uh, open for comment. Public hearings usually uh, pass the same night, but with limited access to in-person meetings, these new meetings have basically proven that uh, public hearings open on the day that they talk about them and then they close the week after. Speaking of a public hearing, this is meaning that we'll have the city stand with the LGBTQ plus communities in this past year of Montana legislature trying to deny access to medical treatment for trans individuals and passing the very controversial HB 112 which bans trans athletes from sports. The city wants to stay, uh, the state to stay out of family affairs when it comes to gender therapy treatment and most of all reject the ban outright. Gwen Jones talks a little bit more about this, and this is what she had to say as I am stalling to get the clip ready for you. All right, here it is. It's important to do following the actions taken by the 2021 Montana legislature. Um, specifically, there were two bills that were brought up, uh, taken up by the legislature, one of which was limiting transgender youth participation in interscholastic sports. The second one was limiting medical care to transgender youth or transgender I transgender issues. Um, the specifics of the bill and the numbers are spelled out in the resolution. Uh, but uh, when this was picked up by the legislature in January, I heard from constituents. I also heard from legislators who are in Missoula who were very, very unhappy with it, um, wanting to discuss it. So we, of course, are not in the legislature. We can't. Um, we can't really handle that type of issue, but we can certainly discuss this in city council. So I thought it was important to bring. All right. So that was uh, Gwen Jones talking a little bit more about mostly the intro into it. Um, we up next, we also have a uh, another a, a trans uh, resident uh, who is very concerned about the her uh, her part living in Montana. And so far, just so you know, the medical bill that would deny medical treatment for trans uh, individuals what didn't pass on the legislature uh, mostly because uh, well I don't want to get into too much of it but let's just talk about uh, Zoe Seffer a uh, trans woman who is very concerned about uh, leaving in Montana as a trans woman I want to thank City Council for taking this resolution up and uh, give my support to the resolution as well um, as a trans woman uh, in this city who testified at the state legislature and who met with the governor's office about these issues I can tell you that these laws are doing a lot of harm to me in my community, and that as we pleaded at the, as we pleaded at the state level, uh, our pleas fell on the ears of people who would not listen. And now, in addition to the damage that those laws are doing specifically, my community is also facing more harassment and worse harassment, both in the state and at um, and in Missoula. I have friends who have fled the state of Montana. I have friends who are living homeless in the state of Montana. And many of us are wondering if this place is safe for us. All right. So that was Zoe Seffer talking a little, um, a lot about what's happening in the state of uh, her community. Uh, the rest of the comment gave heavy, uh, got gets really heavy. And she hopes that this resolution that the city council are drafting up will tell the state that trans people are welcome here. Someday we'll also refer to them as people first and foremost. Um, Mayor John Engen also reflects on um, just uh, everything. This is important, and um, we are not uh, we are not the state's legislative body, but this is an opportunity, thanks to you, to remind uh, folks like Zoe and others that uh, that uh, the 
discrimination and hatred isn't what Missoula is about. So thank you again. I really appreciate your efforts. All right. So that was uh, John Ingen. Um, up next, we'll, we're moving on to the next thing. Uh, and just uh, in terms of just like how uh, weak the HB 112 uh, trans uh, athlete bill is. Um, so MCPS uh, Superintendent Rob Watson did uh, talk a little bit more in a uh, basically in a um, school board meeting a couple months ago it talked about this particular bill that was passed and he says it's a weak bill and if there's any um and there's also backdoor policies so if federal funds were to deny uh, federal funding for athletic sports in the state of montana then they would just basically repeal the bill just like that so they that was one of the things that were uh, that's kind of being discussed in just terms of re resolution and they hope to pass it next uh monday when they open up more for public comment uh, committee meetings, uh, budget committee of the whole. Last week we focused on the fire department and their mobile crisis unit. This meeting was all about funding for the Missoula Police Department. Last year we saw the city of Missoula did not defund the police, much to the disappointment of many folks who at the time were in, in ra I in uh, enthralled with the George Floyd, Floyd case and wanted the city of Missoula to stay on top of social issues. Chief Jason White speaks uh, about the goals for fiscal year 2022. You see our first goal is to protect life and property. Our second goal is to enhance public trust. Our third goal is to enhance internal trust. And our fourth goal is to strengthen and modernize the department's response to emerging public safety trends. So those are, those are the broad-based goals by which we inform the operations of the department and also inform the requests uh, for our budget going forward. Okay, so Chief White w continued more, and he was just talking about some of the pitches and some of the ideas that they really want to put into there. And so far, this was a gesture as White was uh, wanted to focus more on the brass tax of things in the department for funding. So far, the city usually has ceremonies during the city council to swear in new officers. They usually have like two to three people every couple months. But in terms of last year's budget and officers on duty, Jason White goes into a little more detail about that in terms of how the cost for uh, officers. We are allocated 116 officer positions within the police department. I currently have four vacancies, which takes us to 112. And uh, within three weeks, I have, we'll have an additional two openings. So by the end of August, we will be uh, short six officers. I have uh, slated for August 30th, initially the hiring of four officer, four new officers, trying to get a, additional academy slots uh, to get all six hired, uh, but we remain way deep in the list to get additional slots at the upcoming academy. So in terms of uh, police officers, it kind of feels as though that uh, there's uh, one police officer for about 80 people in the city of Missoula, if you were to like kind of like break it up in officers per residence as well. Um, of course, what, uh, what I hope you looked at was the budget towards the police from 2021, which saw 804000 projected with a current standing about $750,000 this year. August 30th is when Chief White will know for sure for the new hires. The city plans to pass the official budget for fiscal year 2022 on August 23rd. Among the budget that was a series of requests from the police department. They usually ha often have requests. It seems like it, it was like a new one every month especially this last year but these are the top kind of like the the top nine from what they listed on um, during this presentation i'm just going to breeze right through it number one corporal positions bosses of the patrol officers they're just a, another step up uh three new bailiffs and um and up to seven reserve officers part of this is to be able to uh compete with the uh ever-growing municipal court that is in the city of missoula since we are supposed to be holding an election coming up this uh, season for the uh, municipal court judges. Uh, ballistic vest replacements, replacing those bulletproof vests, electric control weapons. Uh, they also, this is the one that they had the uh, VR on top of the taser uh, grant uh, which they're looking to approve. Uh, five marked vehicles and a motorcycle is something new. Negotiation van. So basically it's a reused 1996 ambulance that they want to convert into a negotiation van so they can have some more storage and stuff for uh, any incidentals. And But also they want to have a mobile command post for vehicles so they can have an on-site uh, place where they can hold evidence and have ongoing investigations and keep it for emergencies. The spectrum meeting checks for drugs and is also withheld for grants opportunities. So this is something that's probably not going to be on the budget 
since they're looking to get this. Additional service cost software maintenance last year was $22,000 request. And that's kind of the gist of what they want. Uh, those are the asks from the police department so far. Chief White feels as though that he wants to fill in the gaps and how the police department are running are uh, running uh, are running on a deficit. So, which means services outweigh the costs in the long run. So far, if you are interested in learning more about the connecting to your local police department, they have an event that's happening on August third from five to six five to eight p.m. It's an open house. You can meet and greet with some of the police officers, and it's going to be at City Hall. Another big item for the budget meeting was the American Rescue Plan, which sees money coming to Missoula for up to $45 million. And so this is going to be funds allocated, and this is part of HB uh, bill in the state of Montana 632, which was established by the state legislature to allocate funds to communities in the state of Montana as a result of all this money coming in from the American Rescue Plan. SB 297 will handle the broadband internet, so part of this Will they want to look into infrastructure pu for public utilities, water, sewer, stormwater? Also, internet is a big thing, so they're looking for infrastructure on there, in, in which they created the Senate bill in the Montana House and, and to the Montana Senate to handle the broadband infrastructure details. All right, so land use and planning. Up next, we ha uh, the most recent version of a regulatory code was established over a decade ago and does not provide us with the tools we need to actualize the goals outlined in the growth policy. Laval means our growth policy talks about clarity in terms of adding this uh, uh, zoning policy to the growth of Missoula. We recognize that there has also been growing community concerns and frustrations about development projects. Community members are concerned with community and personal impacts and the inequitable distribution of housing development. Developers have voiced frustrations over lack of regulatory clarity and the length of review times. And city staff and officials note that there's been a lack of alignment between regulations and policies. Oh, so that's, uh, I mean, that's kind of like just going through the background of what's going on with, uh, with that as well. Uh, from all the reporting I've done, I've seen, um, I've seen, uh, there's always like some kind of bid for development, but then there's, there's a whole nother meeting devoted to just rezoning the area so they can have a more commercial higher unit density. So they want to help curve this. This is a better way to provide diverse housing and affordable and up, but also create a zoning ability to uh, start phasing in some of these larger projects rather than just uh, overtly just plopping them down in the middle of certain neighborhoods. And after research in some of the areas of Ben Brewer with the community uh, planning, development, and, and innovation talks a little bit more about this. Um, a unified development ordinance um, is a comprehensive statute that locates development and land use regulations all in one place and help to uh, eliminate the inconsistencies that exist when regulations are spread across multiple codes. So um, we talk a lot about the idea of syncing up the code. And as, as we talked about already, we, you know, we've received feedback that codes in Missoula are, um, can be challenging or unclear or, or not um, synced up or don't hold hands. And that's really the, the main goal of a unified development ordinance is to put everything in one place use the same terms, use the same processes, have, have the definitions um, uh, be consistent throughout so that it creates a, a, a streamline, a, a clear pipeline for development to do and understand. All right, so basically what he's talking about, um, and we can all just kind of go back to this, is that it's just synergy. You know, first and foremost, it's all about synergy. Part of the process will include an audit of the system in place and come up with challenges that may be solved later down the line. Most of the challenges in neighborhoods can have a transitional time period for infill development. So they want to work on having a better uh, transitional uh, for as they start developing some of these areas for growth inward, which is the part of the huge uh, our growth, our, our, our Missoula Missoula planning process. So Aaron Pearn, Office of Housing and Community Development, who has been spearheading these updates, talks a little bit more about this, and this is what she had to say. I think the city has made great strides in our engagement in the past couple of years. We also have a long way to go to really engage our residents in ways that are meaningful and consistent, not just on an issue by issue or initiative by initiative basis, but throughout the course of, of multiple efforts um, that, in, that impact neighborhoods or impact people's lives in, in ways that are meaningful to them. And so I think that is our goal. And, and it doesn't mean that at the end of this process that everyone will be happy with the outcome, but what it will mean, our goal is that at the end of this process, everyone will say, I had an opportunity to engage and, and my feedback was heard 
and my feedback was incorporated. And so these meetings were, will be ongoing and you guys can comment and you can send emails to the city uh, just about just how you want the growth to go, better ways to uh, work with zoning and all that stuff. Um, so up next, uh, we do have a little bit of public works. This was this is one was almost passed by me, but the city owned water company is looking to fund projects near the current water company headquarters for office space and more. And so far, they're looking to doing some renovations and they don't want to pass. Uh, they don't want to surpass anything higher than three hundred thousand dollars cap. Um, and so far, plans and other costs are looking at, at, at a 10 percent markup for construction services. They did talk a little bit about this. Uh, some of uh, some of the city council were not uh, too keen on uh, Sandra Vasica made a comment said that she's against this project solely because she doesn't want the city of Missoula to become a landowner and she doesn't think that it's uh, within the public's interest for the city to start buying a property. So uh, in-person public meetings are were also something that kind of uh, came up as well in which uh, Jordan has responded as coming soon so we might be able to see some in-person uh, public comments moving forward but if you are interested in learning more about your city uh, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. Again, you just can Google City of Missoula, and if you go and see this page, you're on the right page. And like I always tell everyone, go to government, go to agendas, webcast minutes under your city council tab. Once again, right here, boom, agendas, webcast minutes, and it shows you uh, a page like this, but then you just wait a little bit, and then the next part will appear, and this is your calendar. You can do a list. I suggest you do calendar because the list is a lot messier because if you see a calendar, you can scroll over this, and you can see all these meetings and more. Then you click on the meeting that you want to see, and you go to HTML or any of those uh, tabs that are right here. You can go to video itself, and then you are able to watch past meetings and look at the agenda and actually click on any of these hyperlinks that you see right here and the meeting will go right to that topic which is amazing so it is a very user friendly and is a very great way to uh, keep tabs on the city government all right so that about does it for my city council report i have a fun video for you guys to kind of lighten the mood and it's uh from jordan uh demander from uh zootown arts community center's uh, revival comedy night so without further ado here's this and when i come back we're going to talk about some events I don't know if I'll ever get married, probably not, but I, I don't really understand the whole marriage thing. It's like my friend's like, oh, like, I love this person. They're my favorite person. Of course, I want to spend the rest of my life with just this person. Uh, to me, that's sort of like just picking your favorite movie and deciding to only watch that movie over and over again for the rest of your life without watching any other movies. Uh, like, I love the movie Predator. It's probably one of the best movies of all time. Uh, but am I prepared to only watch Predator for the rest of my life and never watch any other movies? Uh, and, uh, and at first, it's kind of nice because I'm, I'm learning things about Predator. Uh, like, like about Predator's adorable drinking problem and the annoying way that Predator breathes while they sleep. Uh, but I don't like to, I don't like to point out Predator's flaws to them because they just get super cranky. Even though Predator has no problem pointing out my flaws to me, I just accept it because th this is what marriage is. I signed up for this. <laughs> and it's like you know, a couple months go by, and then Predator's just upset that I'm spending so much time with my friends. And I try to tell them to go out and make some friends, but I'm just way better at making friends than Predator is. But I can't say that to Predator, so I just have to invite them to come hang out with me and my friends, and that's okay. That's okay. Uh, this is what being married is all about. So it doesn't get bad until it's like 10 o'clock at night and Predator's ready for bed, but I'm not ready for bed. And Predator wants to go upstairs and go to sleep uh, and, it, and it wants me to go with them, but I try to tell Predator I only have 50 pages left in the last Harry Potter book, and it makes way more sense for me just to stay up and finish reading, and also I'm not at all tired, so why would I go to bed right now? And then Predator does this thing, well, just come up there and lie with me till I fall asleep, and then you can get back up and go downstairs and read. But we've tried this before, and inevitably, Every time I start to get up thinking that Predator is asleep because I start to hear that annoying breathing thing they do while they sleep, Predator just wakes up 
and says, no, they're not ready for me to go downstairs yet, which is stupid because I should just be able to go to sleep when I want to go to sleep. <laughs> but that's what I signed up for because that's what marriage is. So it's not my fault that I don't ask Predator how their day was going that day. It's totally natural that I don't want to hear about what they did at their stupid job. I fucking mow yards for a living. I'm not telling you, Predator, what I did for my day. Let's talk about something interesting. I don't want to hear about your day, Predator. <laughs> and apparently that makes me a bad partner. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, you know, time goes on and eventually six months down the road or whatever, I can't even watch Predator without just pretending I'm watching Alien. <laughs> but I don't want to stop watching Predator because I'm also a super jealous asshole and I'm afraid that one of my friends might start watching Predator if I stop. Uh, but then I remember that it's Missoula and most of my friends have already watched Predator anyway. Because that's how this <laughs> works. Uh, hey, thanks so much for coming out, you guys. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, that's definitely one of the more reserved um, comedians during that particular night, and usually it gets pretty uh, pretty saucy with the language. Uh, let's kick things off with a little bit of uh, events that are happening in and around Missoula before I wrap up my show. If you're interested in doing the Summer Meals Program, the uh, the Missoula Food Bank is doing this through MCPS, and it's at starting most mornings, 8.30 a.m. at various locations, Chief Charlotte Elementary, Franklin Elementary School, Lowell School, and Russell Elementary. And this is happening from 8.30 a.m. to about 1 p.m. No meal service uh no meal services on July 5th, but that's way past due, and this is going to happen until August 13th. But then again, there's also the meal time that's happening in the library, which happens every lunchtime around 11.30 to about 1, and that happens Monday through Friday. Uh, family fun time is more gymnastics. The family fun time is back. They must pre-register online if you want your family to go there, and there's only 20 spots available in the time slot, in different time slots. So they have a Wednesday and Friday, and that's uh, 9 to 10, 10 to 11, and then, then, of course, today is going to be 9.30 to 10.30. Hands-on Science Palooza, UM Spectrum Discovery, which is at the new location here in the library, 455 East Main Street. And this is from 2 to 6, Tuesday through Saturday this week. They're showing kids of uh, all kinds of science, technology, engineering, and math. The Wiz of the West, hey, the MCT is doing a show for the Missoula Children's Theater. They're back with their summer camps. The Missoula Children's Theater presents the Wiz of the West, the classic story of the Wizard of Oz, but with a twist, or should they say twister, and you get a deal, uh, have uh, all sorts of characters, not just the ones that you know, but even more characters, courtesy of the Missoula Children's Theater, an original show based on the source material. Uh, first of their tangle with the mad dog gang of barking, back-biting hounds who work for the meanest old witch in the West. Hawk knows Haley. And so that's just a little taste of what you guys can expect. And also tonight is Much Ado About Nothing premiere. They're doing six shows Friday through Sunday, and then next week's going to be Thursday through Saturday. MCAT's going to be doing the live stream on Saturday night, July 31st. So if you guys miss it, the live performance, which I suggest you guys check out, you can watch it on Zootown Arts Community Center's Facebook and YouTube page, but also you go to MCAT.org to find it on our local live pages. And so that's about your Friday night. Let's talk a little bit about Saturdays. As always, you have our markets from 8 a.m. to about 1 p.m. you got Pine Street right in front of the Thomas Mar Bar. You have your People's Market there. Go to the Red Exit at the end of Higgins Avenue, and you can go to the the, the cool farmer's markets, and then you can go down to the River Street Market, which they have a lot of food vendors, and right in front of the Carousel, that's the River City, that's the River, uh, no wait, it's the Clark Fork River Market, sorry, I keep on, uh, there's a lot of names for it, but <laughs> the River Market is happening, they used to do it right underneath the bridge in that kind of general area near ba Best Reed Park, but they moved it over to uh, the carousel, just in front of the carousel, as they're doing construction on the Higgins Bridge. Then there's pop-up Pilates in the park, Carousel from Missoula. If you're in the area anyways, you can do some Pilates near the Clark Fork River Market. And this happens from 9 a.m. to 9.30 tomorrow morning. Kids class, Boho Rainbow, painted with, with, with a twist, is doing a color Colors of the Rainbow with your kids. Instruction is guided and supplies is painting on the twist. is at the Stevens Center, uh, from what I believe, and that's where painting with a twist is. 
Free Kids Night at Splash Montana. Hey, if you are interested, Miz uh, Missoula Firefighters Local 271 and Five Valleys Restoration want to give back to the Missoula community by providing a free, fun summer evening with swimming for kids. Event will be held at the Splash Montana on Saturday, July 24th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. Free entry for kids and their guardians. Lifeguards on duty. 800 people max on first-come, first-served basis. Pond, Lazy River, and water slides are open here in the city of Missoula. And uh, Splash, Mon uh, Splash Montana is right next to uh, Sentinel High School. You can't miss it. It's a big water park. Um, <laughs> then there was the Montana Fishing Film Festival. Um, the Oregon Park Allegiance Film, they're joining us for their uh, film festival. Uh, showcases fly fishing. Uh, show starts at 8, doors open at not at 6, with family friendly activities beforehand. And also I wanted to uh, give a shout out to Free Cycles as they are bringing back their uh, late night shows starting uh, starting the open doors at 7 p.m. They're going to have uh, Sandwell is from this hometown of Eureka, Montana. Sandwell gathers spontaneous as a means of outlet and reunion for the band. Cosmic Sands, a psychedelic jazz rock four piece, is thrilled to pay their play their first show in Missoula. All right, so Missoula Outdoor Cinema, Jurassic Park, you go to Head Start, Playgrounds, and it's the old Head Start School on the north side, and you guys can go there. They're going to project Jurassic Park, and the original Jurassic Park, Steven Spielberg, all that stuff. And if you're interested in the Farmer's Market, Target Ranger's doing the Farmer's Market Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Then you got the annual Peacemaker Award at Bonner Park. This is a big deal because this is the Jeanette Rankin Peace Center hosts this, and they give one every year. And this Peacemaker uh, recipient is the founder of Porsche, uh, Portico Real Estate and her, uh, let's see. Let me just double check. KD. Oh, I better actually double look this up real quick before I... Uh, because the person who's receiving it, uh, they they called her KD. So I have to make sure I get her name right. I don't want to I don't want to miss anything mess anything up. So the uh, the person who's being presented is oh KD Dickinson. Uh, she was uh, one of the few people in uh, the local area to come out as gay in the 1970s, um, and. Um, and she was also a firefighter back in the 70s. Please join us for a musical celebration in Bonner Park from 2 to 4 p.m. on Sunday, July 25th. Bring a cherry water bottle and plan to celebrate the amazing Peacemaker. The community is also invited to nominate someone that you would like to be honored for the 2022 Peacemaker Award. So that's happening on Sunday. So uh, I wanted to thank you guys for joining me this morning. Uh, there's a lot going on this morning. I had some technical difficulties, but I don't want to get too much into it. So I want to uh, thank you guys for joining me and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramph.